your question, Paul. Where was God? So you have three questions that I'm going to try and answer. Where was God standing or sitting when he created the heavens and the earth? Was God in or out of the universe when he created it? Think Schrodinger's cat, which I still haven't looked up. Something about a cat in a dead box. Um, understanding that's a psychological perspective. And then who created God? Well, all three of those had to do with Genesis 1. So I'm going to go back and look at Genesis 1. But in terms of was God in or out of the universe when he created it? And the perspectives of uh, psychology. Um, I think that psychology definitely has a human element. Um, and perception is all about how we perceive things. I think would be, uh, it's so subjective that it's, it's infinitely subjective in the study of psychology, the user experience, as my psychiatrist would put it, um, is, is infinite. Um, so I'm not too sure about a psychological perspective. Uh, was, was the, is, does a set of all sets contain itself? What do you call that, a paradox? Um, not too sure about those, but as a seminary student, I'm going to do the right thing and go back to Genesis 1. So, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That is a title, a subject heading. You almost don't need to read it other than it's saying the next group of words are going to be all about how God created the heavens and the earth. Now, it doesn't say anything about how he created the heavens, which in my theology, I believe he created the heavens first and then the earth second. Uh, as a way to trump the devil and the angels that rebelled against him to say, look, I'm going to create mankind who will choose me when you did not choose me. And they're going to be weaker and smaller than you. And I'm going to use them to disprove you, as we see in the book of Job, chapter 1 and chapter 2. But I went back to the second line of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 2, and looked at the Hebrew. And let me read it for you in Hebrew. I don't speak Hebrew, so this is probably going to be way wrong. But it says, Waharis, the earth, hay Hayata was tohu, formless, wabohu, and void, wohosek, and darkness, alpene, was over the face, tohom, of the deep. Warua, the spirit, Elohim of God. You might know the word Elohim. Uh, Merahapet was hovering. Alpene over. Hamayim, the waters. And the basic idea is that there was nothing. And then the very next line is, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. So there was nothing and there was something. And so that's the, the basic premise. And um, as for, so that would answer your question, was he sitting, standing? It says he was a spirit, and so a spirit doesn't, he didn't have anything to stand on, so he wasn't standing, nor did he have anything to sit on, so he wasn't sitting. He was basically floating in space, or he was floating in some sort of void, and he created space from the void. But... The general idea is that there was nothing and then there was something. Before all of this existed, there was just absolutely nothing and it was just God alone. And so he created us because he loves us and he wants to be with us and he wants company. And I was recently reminded that he intended to actually live on the earth with us. In the Garden of Eden, he was walking around with Adam and Eve and no longer is he with us? But every year, God makes another attempt at coming and living with us. And we know in heavy worship sessions, his spirit will come in the form of a fog. And like a boiling 
vapors of a pot or the smoke of a flaming torch and he will come and he will he will be in different his spirit will be in different parts of the earth and in christian churches and through our belief in christ we have access to that spirit but in general there was another and and as for your question um who created god we don't know i'm thinking nobody did um but it's outside of scripture so <laughs> we don't know anyway this is kind of a long comment but uh very interesting i'll say one other thing that um in genesis 1 chapter 2 there's a cool little um repetition al pene tahaum and al pene yamayim so it's and that means over the front was the deep and then over the front of the waters god was over so uh, nothing was over the deep or the abyss and then god was over water or vapor um so just get the idea of stillness quietness nothing and we have the big bang god said let there be light bam and there's all this light and uh on a side note before i end the video um you probably know this but they believe that the universe is expanding because every star is getting further away from every other star and if you reverse that in time you get a single point of origin which would very much explain when God said, let there be light, there was actually an explosion of the cosmos and the universe and all these stars started to get further and further away from each other. And we have scientists proving that. We also, scientists also proved how God made mankind from the dirt. He did that through evolution, I believe, through a long period of time. Um, and that's what the evolutionary scientists believe, that we came from the dirt from the ocean and formed into fish and then into amphibians and reptiles and mammals and primates and then us. So here you have a chain of events that mankind literally was formed from the dust, not in a single day or moment period where God gathered all the dirt together and then poked little eye holes and then made little hair but that he actually, for, through evolution, took took a little bit of dirt and made all of us. The point being, I guess, not I guess, the point being, I know that God is amazing and he created all of this from nothing, um, which means that we should trust him, I think. So. <laughs> Have a good, blessed morning, man.